Hello and welcome to this embryology video. In the last video, we discussed the basics of the pharyngeal arches. In this one, we will talk about the specifics of the tongue and the thyroid. Let's talk first about the tongue, which forms from four swellings on the base of the developing mouth. To see this, we need to return to the coronal section of embryo around the end of the fourth week. Here we have the pharyngeal arches. The anterior two-thirds of the tongue develops from two symmetrical lateral lingual swellings and one medial swelling, the tuberculum impar. These all originate from the first pharyngeal arch. The posterior one-third of the tongue forms from a single median swelling called the copula or hypobranchial eminence. This forms from the second to the fourth pharyngeal arch. In the adult, the V-shaped groove, also known as the sulcus terminalis on the tongue, represents the fusion of epithelium, covering the first and third pharyngeal arches. Now, the sensory innervation of the tongue is easy to understand. General sensory afferents from the anterior two-thirds of the tongue must be trigeminal as it is the nerve of the first arch, which is the origin of this portion of tongue. The posterior one-third is supplied by the glossopharyngeal nerve, the nerve of the third arch. Special sensory innovation for taste is via the corda tympani of the facial nerve, the nerve of the second arch. Let's move on to the thyroid. The thyroid first appears as a structure called the thyroid diverticulum, a thickening of endoderm between the first and second pharyngeal arches in the midline of the embryo. Let's look at a sagittal section so that we can see what happens next better. The thyroid diverticulum descends through the neck, but it remains connected to the pharynx via the thyroglossal trunk. The duct fuses with the ventral portion of the fourth pharyngeal pouch, which we discussed in the previous video. This provides the parafollicular cells for the thyroid. The diverticulum bifurcates to form two lobes, connected by the isthmus. The final position is reached by the end of the seventh week, and it lies just inferior to the hyoid bone. The thyroglossal trunk then usually degrades, however this may fail, leaving ectopic thyroid tissue anywhere on the descent path at the front of the neck. Portions of the thyroglossal trunk can also remain as cysts. Subscribe to Sultan Brain Hub for more videos to help explain the mysteries of the brain.